hello, hello, and welcome back as I continue to get cock-blocked harder than anyone since Joseph on his wedding night in Perfidious Pete plays XCOM 2. And Joseph and Mary on their wedding night, you know that sort of had to be an awkward conversation, right? Oh, yes, I know we're married now, Joseph, but I'm afraid you won't be getting any action this evening. Gotta preserve my virtue for the whole virgin birth thing. Sorry, it's in the bylaws, son of God and all. What are you gonna do? Oh, Joseph, he had to be really, really salty about that, poor bastard. Plus, think about this. How bad would it suck to get cucked by God? I mean, damn. It doesn't matter who you are, how powerful, what kind of person you might be. You could be the best person on the planet. Wouldn't make a difference. It doesn't matter how much money you have, what you do for a living, what kind of car you drive, or I guess back in those times, what kind of wagon you were rolling. It wouldn't even matter how good you were in the sack. You're not going to stack up well against the omnipotent creator of the universe. Probably especially in the sack department now that I think about it, because the word potent is right there in the adjective that sort of defines what it means to be a deity. Omnipotence, if you're a god, it's sort of required, and potent is a required part of omnipotence. How does this apply to XCOM, Pete? I, well, no, no, it's getting Christmas time, so it's on my mind, but the way it applies to XCOM, that's kind of how I feel with regard to promotions lately. Doesn't matter what I do, I'm just, I'm not good enough. I'm like poor Joseph. I can love my cheating wife, I can raise some other dude's kid, I could carpenter the shit out of some plows and yokes and even become the patron saint of fathers, and it doesn't matter. Still not good enough, sorry Pete. You want to be the patron saint of something? How about you grow a set of horns and become the patron saint of cuckolds like Joseph, because you're not getting any. Always going to be playing second fiddle to God's drunken one night stand, I guess. Oh well. Good enough for Joseph, I guess it's good enough for me. And also, I've probably talked enough about Joseph's raw deal. And, you know, it really was kind of a raw deal if you think about it. The only person who maybe got it worse than Joseph was Job. And Job didn't get cucked by God, he got straight up trolled by him. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, my, yeah, I think my favorite saint probably is Saint Judas anyway, because he's the patron saint of lost causes, and we know our own. So, black smoke, we can reduce contact cost. I have so much intel, I really don't care about reducing the contact cost, so I'm going to say not now to that one. What else is on the menu? It's good to see Bruce Willis is back in action. We could pick up more intel, which I just specifically said I don't care about. Uh, we have basically nothing to do. Have we swung by the black market this month? Supply drops in six days. We probably have. What were we working on before we got interrupted? Probably making contact down here in New Indonesia. Let's get back to that. Thanks. St. Jude's going to help us out on this mission. He's the patron saint of lost causes. He's going to be what holds this team together. He's also like the patron saint of orphans and maybe children. I don't know. I'm not Catholic, so this is all, you know, secondhand guesswork on the part of Perfidious Pete. Feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. Alien data cache decryption. We actually did that for 133 intel. Why? Was I high for five minutes when I assigned you a project, Dr. Tigan? Well, we've got a facility lead. Honestly, I don't really feel like that's a priority. Have we got anything else we can do? Yeah, leave anyway. The elders have always been elusive. Aside from the occasional monument, I don't imagine most of the people in the city centers have ever actually seen one. But you have, right, Dr. Tigan? Probably from the inside, if I'm going to guess. The hands of some terminal affliction explains their absence from the public eye. Or maybe they're just, uh, they've gone full Justin Bieber and they're tired of being famous now. Maybe they're just like, I'm a person, leave me alone, I have rights, uh, just because I'm a psychic monstrosity with four arms. We cannot do this, all other shadow projects must be completed before undertaking this research. What did we not do? Uh, we probably still have some chunk of the Codex thing to do because we still have one of those missions. You know what? I'm gonna, I guess that explains why I did the... Okay, I guess that explains why I did the intel research, because it was either that or nothing. Might as well research this facility lead while we're working on things. Back to scanning. We're sort of just killing time here, waiting on Dolly Parton, who's three days away from learning the Soul Fire ability. You want to speed it up down there, dolls? A Dolly Freak Parton! It's, it's too perfect, right? What with the plastic surgery and all, she is starting to look a little bit like a caricature of herself and not a good caricature either, but like one you would see hanging on the wall of a shitty restaurant. I think I'm going to roll with it. Let's continue your training now that you've learned Soulfire. Schism. 
Insanity does a small amount of guaranteed damage and applies rupture to the target, which is very good. I also quite like Fortress. Fuse is garbage. Let's begin our schism training. There's no need to upgrade the Shadow Chamber facility. We are never going to train another Psy Operative. In fact, it's starting to seem pretty unlikely that we even get Dolly up to the point where we actually care about her research. And our research is by and large completely finished here. Do we have anything to research at all? Nope. Well, Dr. Tigan's going to be sitting on his hands while we uh, uh, do nothing for a little while. Man, I'm really beginning to question the worthiness of Dolly Parton. We haven't needed a Psy operative so far. Resistance communication. Okay, avatar progress. They made three in a single month, which is nice. Constructed one new facility, completed one dark event. We, however, fought one guerrilla op, did one supply raid, destroyed one facility, installed one radio relay, investigated two rumors, and reduced the avatar progress by that same three. Suck it, aliens. Now I think we gotta go make uh, our... I kind of go make our rounds. I will spend 30 intel to reveal this. Rapid response. I really don't care about rapid response. Reinforcements on guerrilla ops. Not that big of a deal. We'll probably stop that Avatar Project's major breakthrough if the opportunity arises. Don't really care about the 668 supplies. What I care about more than all of that, go into the black market and resistance HQ to look for some Avengers new personnel. New I would like to finish. Uh, wait, you're not Asia. You're Oceania. We already have the Asia bonus. I guess making contact there is sort of also irrelevant. Really, it seems like we should maybe just be accelerating the storyline missions and trying to get it over, but I want to give Dolly Parton an opportunity to get her shit together. ECS Iron Skin is trash. Emily Barnes should Yeah, we're taking you. So long, Betty White. It's been a fun run, but uh, no more for you. Speaking of fun runs, eh, it doesn't really seem that fun to me. People are always talking about, oh, you should do a fun run. No, no, thank you. No. I don't I don't I, I don't see the fun in that. Fun run? No, it's just that th those two words don't belong in the same sense. Welcome, Commander. Oh good, Dr. Sebastian Rue, engineer, or Colonel Emily Taylor, a specialist. Can't do that. And, all right, well, we don't need any of you. I guess we'll go pick up our supplies Avengers then, because that's a pointless way to burn three days while Dolly Parton masters her freak show nature. Seems like Dolly should have, like, a more aggressive hairstyle. If she's going to go with the freak, just, like, the soft curls, don't really do it. Also, one thing I did notice is the Dolly side training has flattened out that platinum blonde do she normally is uh, rocking. Haven defense? Nope. Operation Broken Knight. Extract a VIP from the Advent City. Okay. We pick up Dr. Karen Dunn, scientist. Brilliant. Just what I was thinking. We have literally nothing to research. What does this project need more than more scientists? What do our enemies look like? Scroll back to the top, please. So, Mutant Elite and Andromedon, an Archon, a Shield Bearer, Elite Officer, Elite Shield Bearer, Super Heavy Mech, Sidewinder, eh, Sectopod. Eh, it's not a big. For it's 16 enemies, but the sectopod is probably the most dangerous man on the mission. I'm looking for the man in the mission. I'm gonna put a bullet in his brain. Okay, the Michael Jackson thing kind of fell apart, but I am not musically talented. I do the best I can with what limited abilities I have. Is this the team we're going to bring along then? We're still bucking for promotions. Uh, Betty White, you are straight up fired, by the way. I'm sorry, Betty White. Your service to the project, I want to say, has been long and noble, but we both know that would be a fucking lie, so I'm not even going to say it. Instead, I'm just going to strip all of your gear and forget... No, Betty White is... She's, she's tenacious, man. She's trying to hold on. She's like, no, must remain relevant despite 94 years of age, and she's doing an okay job, but no, we, we there's a new hotness in town, and you are not it. In this case, the new hotness is specifically Bruce Willis, because he's got to be closer. Even though Emily Dodger Barnes is also a colonel, Bruce Willis is a colonel as well and has been on missions as a colonel. So he's got to be closer to catching that brigadier rank. Give him a scram gun, get rid of that fusion blade, go for the fusion axe, plasma grenade, not nah, the proximity mine, dog. And for your utility item, I, I think we've been rolling like blue screen rounds with you, but uh, it seems like maybe AP. Uh, AP rounds are probably just as good. Good to see Bruce back in action. Terry Hulk Hogan is fine. Demi Moore is, of course, on the scene. The question then becomes, do we want to take Jamie Lee Yogurt Curtis 
or do we want to sub her out for the more tried and true and tested Morgan Freeman? Oh, Schwarzenegger? Yeah, we're gonna... No, Pete, please don't banish me back into oblivion. It has been so long since I've had an opportunity to... No. Sorry, Arnold. Adios, champ. Go, uh, maybe, I don't know, lower yourself into a vat of molten slag or something. Harrison Ford's coming back for the new hotness. Yeah, nothing new or hot about Harrison Ford, Pete. Everything about Harrison Ford is old, cold, and cruel, and bitter. Like this shithole world we're all stuck living in. So bleak, Harrison Ford. So bleak. Take some Venom rounds. Uh, do we want Venom rounds on Harrison Ford? What else could we write? Yeah, yeah, Venom rounds are fine. What's your other utility I'm going to be? We haven't been using the gas bombs or acid bombs. Then again, we haven't really needed them. Just plasma grenade is probably acceptable. So you're sorted, Jamie Lee Curtis. Jamie Lee Curtis or Morgan Freeman? At this point, Morgan Freeman sort of seems like the slam dunk. And you know what? That reminds me. Jamie Lee. I'm going to give Jamie Lee Curtis one last chance to get herself leveled up. And it is going to be a final chance here because there's something else we're going to do. Where is... Danny DeVito. Hey, you, you want to? Hey, 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 hey! You want put a sock in it, Shin? I'm thinking over here. Where is Danny DeVito? There he is. We're gonna put Danny DeVito in here for some retraining because I think I may have finally found a sniper build that I don't hate. And if Jamie Lee Curtis can't rank up on this one, Danny DeVito is gonna be a higher rank. He will be better. So we would, we would just scrub the little yogurt maven and bring in Frank, I guess. He could, you know, live in a couch and do odd things with duct tape and occasionally eat garbage. Stallone, you're good. Damn, Judy Dench, you're good. Everybody else is really sorted. Let's get this mission underway. Let's go save Karen Dunn, scientist, because there's nothing the project needs more than another mouth to feed. I don't know, maybe she can tool up the Sky Ranger. Or alternatively, maybe she could uh, throw a little more computing power here at the optimization of the mission loading so that, you know, it doesn't take 25 minutes for us to load into every mission. I don't know why, but it seems like the longer the campaign goes, the longer the load times get. It's baffling. Is it because you're, like, loading scars and shit on our troopers? Is that what it is? You gotta put in those extra textures? The resistance is maybe the lesson is just stop getting everyone butchered all the time, Pete, and the game will load faster. It's all the scar tissue you've got to load up that's bogging shit down. We're going to Patrol Ward, Vancouver. Well, it's not an exciting city name. It's probably not a city name at all, really, but it, it seems like the kind of thing Canada would go for. It's sort of a no-nonsense, no-frills, baseline kind of budget city name. We call this Patrol Ward, Vancouver because, well, there's a ward here and they occasionally patrol. It's like Moose Jaw. Why do you call it moose jaw? Well, people run over a lot of mooses, and there's jaws been dislocated and scattered across the way. So we just said, you know what? Screw it. We're just going to call it moose jaw. You can't actually drive into town without running over at least one moose jaw. It just seemed appropriate. We're not a creative people. What can we say? I mean, we gave you... Look, look at what we've given the world. Jim Carrey, Brian Adams. We're not a creative people, Pete. Robin Thick, Alan Thick. Justin Bieber, we're responsible for all of that. I say that, but you know, I'm picking on Brian Adams. Perfidious Pete actually likes Brian Adams. Yeah, Cuts Like a Knife is a good song. I said it and I meant it, Internet. Come at me. You disagree? You're just straight up wrong. Cuts Like a Knife is a great song. Heaven, also a great song. Now, the shitty song that he... Oh, all right. Bruce Willis is already boned. Ratted on by a piece of shit civilian. Okay, what can we what can we make happen here? We got to figure out a way to get a kill for old Brucey. Now, Brucey can go murder this man. These guys kind of made a shitty decision here because Bruce can just go hack him apart with his axe. But we do have Jamie Lee Curtis as well. And we should try and funnel kills to Jamie Lee when possible. I have to assume her shot from this rooftop is going to be respectable. Never mind, that was objectively bad unless you shoot another what do you shoot never mind jamie lee curtis is doing 10 damage to a guy who isn't even loaded onto the map yet that's pretty solid work jamie lee pretty solid work 
Well, I think we'll go ahead and take this snapshot. It's probably not going to get a kill, but it can't miss. Nine damage. Not a kill, but an incredible facsimile. Our cover is completely blown, and Bruce Willis is going to have to dig himself out of... No, don't evac, Bruce. He's going to have to dig himself out of his own mess. We're going to bring him over here. Turns out Bruce Willis didn't really need the assist from J.B. Lee Curtis, but it probably made her feel good. And the serpent suit panic was nice. And we're back to getting more intel than we can ever possibly use, thanks to Harrison Ford. We're just going to have Bruce Willis fall back. rest of the team is going to come over here and set up for the inevitable alien retaliation, because it's on its way. It's coming. We just got to figure out where we want to be. Do we need cover? We're probably going to want to get some cover. At least Shats. Sorry, Pete, I was a little bit slower than normal because I was testing out these new jump boots that my friend Spock got me for our camping trip. Wait, wasn't it Spock who was wearing the jet boots on a camping trip and Kirk who fell off of the cliff? I can't remember how that worked. It's like Kirk and Bones and Spock were camping because, you know, that's the thing that they would do. It seems like by 2020, the whole camping fad would have just, that that's it. It's got to have run its duration by then. Did I say 2020? I have no idea. Star date 2675 or whatever the shit it is in the distant future of Star Trek. But like people are done camping by then. They've realized, oh, it turns out humans invented, you know, indoor plumbing and homes and climate control and shit for a reason. Because outside sucks. And here at the Federation, we finally come to agree that getting back to nature is not a good thing. There's a reason they call it getting back to nature because we left it intentionally and we should have let it just stay gone. Here at the Federation, we're fully on board with letting it stay gone. We may as well hack here because, honestly, it, it can't really do us any harm. Our cover's already blown. Distraction. Recover all squad. Oh, well, we're not going to. We're just not going to pointlessly hack that one because distraction is real useful. And if we get ourselves into a glorious shit pickle, extraction is going to be one of those abilities that can save our collective bacon. So Stallone, let's get you up here. We'll probably just have you drop into Overwatch. We could have Stallone move again and he would automatically enter Overwatch. And in fact, that's what I'm going to do. I do want him to try and be able to keep an eye on that. We do have one Serpent Man who's out there panicked, freaking out. Shot one of his buddies in the face. Should be prepared for that guy's inevitable response. Still panicked. What are you doing with your back, man? You're down on your forelimbs like you're crawling, but that's that's got to be bad for your spine, though, right? You're going to give yourself scoliosis, dude. That does not look healthy. Just a little off. Demi Moore took a crack at an Archon. It missed. Archon and Andromedon together in a pile is a little bit of a tough pod. We are going to get a soft of these guys up with a liberal dose of Overwatch, however. Nine damage from either Dane, Judy Dench, or William Shatner, one of the two. Yeah, another nine damage from Harrison Ford. First shot had to have come from Willie Shatz, because can't help but notice Dane, Judy Dench just fucking whiffed like a champ. Not good. Yeah, five rounds rapid my ass, Judy. Five rounds rapid my ass. All things considered, we are not in a particularly poor position here. We got these guys to walk into us, which is a decided benefit. We got 11 turns to extract our VIP. We got plenty of time, plenty of opportunity to continue working here. 93% at the Archon, 74% at that Andromedon, who is almost dead. I think we hold off on William Shatner here. Jamie Lee Curtis. Let's have you take this Andromedon shot, because theoretically, if you get a kill here, this shouldn't count. Let's see if this actually counts as a kill. I'm pretty sure it does. The snapshot trigger on the convert to robot mode. It does, in fact. Okay, so death from above and snapshot still trigger. Beautiful. We might be able to get another bonus kill out of Jamie Lee. I really don't want to go too far forward because we do know there is a sectopod up there somewhere. So we need somebody who can get over here. Can we see the Viper from this tile? We can, and we would have a flank shot. But whoever's going to take that role needs to be somebody who is not going to miss the shot. Which sort of is like William Shatner exclusively. Stallone, what if we have you haywire protocol here? 89% chance to control this enemy. 
That's remarkably good. I say we take it, and then we can either... Okay, this plan fails. We've got plenty of backup options. If we don't manage to control this enemy, we just kill everything. Stay put where we're at. Kill everything. Alternatively, if we do control him, we can send this man forward and sort of use him as a uh, consequence-free scout. Uh, you know, just like to point out that uh, uh, that hack was brought to you by the good people. Uh, yeah. You must see a Phoenix Online taking 21 health of enemy uh, combatants and converting them to loyal servants of the XCOM project. Just like the University of Phoenix Online will convert you to a loyal servant of the University of Phoenix Online. Alright, Bruce, let's have you slip over here. My goal is to try to avoid having to Icarus jump here. 95% with the Chucked Axe. With the critical here, this could generate a kill. It did, in fact, generate a kill. Bruce Willis, that was beautiful. He's on an implacable move. I think we'll just come back to Bruce. We may not need that implacable move. I'm on the move. William Shatner, we could have you rupture this Archon, but I'm not really sure it's going to be necessary. Uh, you know what? Rupture is pretty good. It, it's a good thing to hit these guys with. Auto critical. 17 solid damage. That puts that Archon in the Hurt Locker. He's ruptured. And you know what? That gives Bruce Willis a chance here to earn a uh, much-deserved kill. Bruce Willis doesn't get as many as he deserves, and this is a guarantee with the stock. There it is. Did you see that one? Yeah. Oh, did you see that one, Pete? Prevent came over there. Oh, Bruce Willis get himself another kill. Shouldn't really What's boast, Bruce. Uh, I, I, you know, I, never mind. I'm, I was gonna say something negative and pick on Bruce okay. Willis, but we didn't bring Bruce Willis here to kill. That's not why we brought Bruce Willis. He's not on this project to be an unrepentant killer. Bruce Willis is all about the dank 411. This is not a die-hard kind of role for our Bruce Willis. This is more of a sixth sense kind of a role, more of a thought-provoking. Oh, he was a ghost the whole time kind of thing. Also, I'm pretty sure Bruce Willis is a ghost this whole time, because as a shinobi, he has been nothing short of absolute oh, magic for the project. Scanning. And we've got our Andromedon shell. I was thinking about having the Andromedon shell run forward, but I don't really want to risk spawning a pod. Let's hold off on that for a turn. Also, leaving these puddles of slop everywhere is not really great for us as a team, because it does cut off some of our potential for advancement. That just leaves us with little Hulk Hogan here. He's going to step up to this corner, which we know is safe because the Andromedon did the dangerous part. And Hulk's going to go on Overwatch. Our little buddy here is still hacked, so we're going to use him to go forward and see what there is to be seen. And maybe pop another pod and bring it into us. We do kind of want to go round the outside, though. we got to go round the outside, round the outside, because we don't want to cut ourselves off with our own acid trail. There we go, around it. Shouldn't this acid maybe put out the fire? We're reading a giant green snot-like trail of mucus everywhere. It sort of feels like that should put out the... F well, I guess I suppose it could be flammable acid. I wonder if there is a variety of acid that's flammable. I mean, there's got to be at least one sort of acid that's flammable, right? There's got to be one flammable acid. So we could get nothing out of this man. I was going to say maybe we could get a punch at something. Doesn't actually look like a punch is going to be in our immediate future. We, not, we can't run and fist strike, huh? Well, what we can do is go make ourselves a very obvious target. So let's just run around here. Non-zero chance this spawns another pod. But remember, we've got that ace in a hole up our sleeve of recover all of your expended actions. We still got that one lurking in our back pocket. And if we need it, we'll use it. Willis Willis, I think we're going to have you come up here and just whip him. Probably a proximity mine out for us. I don't think we're going to get anything more useful out of you than this prox mine. Can we catch all three targets with it? No, not quite. But, hey, you know, it's like Fallout Boy said. You got to remember, two out of three ain't bad. That'll do. Yeah, cause friendly fire. Well, only if we move will it cause friendly fire, and I don't really currently have any intentions of moving. Willie Shats. Well, now's your time to shine, big guy. We have a very dangerous sectopod up here. Somebody should probably take him out. I think, yeah, this is the time. Let's close this out. 
Oh, William Shatner is a little low on ammo, but... Oh, God, I almost did the thing where I Icarus jumped in place again. I almost did it again. I gotta stop doing that. William Shatner's a little low on ammo, which means some of the abilities we might want to use will not be available, but William Shatner also has the auto-reloader thing, so we can have him reload for free. This doesn't cost us an action. Willie Shatz is going to rip somebody's asshole right to wide open here. Let's start with the sectopod. When it comes to assholes and the ripping wide open thereof, sectopod seems like a quality place to start. Seven damage. More importantly, though, we got the shred, and Willie's going to follow it up with a nice traverse fire chain shot for another unspeakable, unholy amount of damage here. Eight. There goes the last of his armor, and then we're going to cap that off with probably between 10 and 12 more. Alternatively, we could hit him for exactly eight more and bring him down to 17. Jamie Lee, in order for you to get bonus shots, you do need an elevation advantage. Can we grapple you up here? Over here somewhere? That'll do. I'll take the high road. Oh, Jamie Lee Curtis, I'll take the high road. Hmm, how come your high road went right by a squad of filthy, disgusting rats with wings then? Yeah, we can definitely shoot our own Andromedon, which I should prefer to not do. Alternatively, we could take a shot at this guy, which I kind of enjoy. What's this far guy got? 92%? No. Give me the slam dunk. Then. Jimmy Lee Curtis takes the can't miss. Well, it didn't miss, but it didn't get a kill either. Demi, what do we want to have you do? We could have Demi Moore come up, whip a grenade, and set off that mine. Alternatively, and I think what is probably, in all things considered, a better plan... Let's go ahead and Oscar Mike here. Give the rest of the team a little bonus movement. I would love to conserve this freebie extra action ability. If we don't have to use it right now, I don't want to use it. Let's see extra move give us some flexibility here with Demi Moore. We can get her up here. Does that help us at all? It will give us not a great shot. It would give us a decent chance to detonate some stuff with a grenade. Is that how we're going to play this? Are we really just going to go grenade happy with Demi Moore, detonate our own proximity by? Can we hit both of these guys? No. Maybe that's not the greatest plan in the world. What's our best shot that's not at a friendly target? 83% that's Sectopod. I say we just go for the rapid fire then. Rapid fire, of course, not going to be 83%. Double 68s, though. I'll, you know, I'll roll two-thirds chance. Remember, Demi, two out of three ain't bad, girl. Two out of two is excellent. If you can hit this follow-up shot, kill the sectopod, and have him explode, and then theoretically detonate the proximity mine? Not detonate the proximity mine, but I'm never going to be salty about the cheap kill. That was nicely done. You can see that sidewinder, but not the one in the back. I would really rather prefer you shoot the other one. And you can get a flank shot at him with a basic move. No problem. Dane Judy Dench is going to come up here. Drop some bombs on this flanked serpent man. He's full health, but Judy has a pretty reasonable chance for a kill. Didn't quite get it. Pete, you got two serpent men here who are uh, by and large unaccounted for. You know, they're not really that unaccounted for because remember that proximity mine is on the ground. Those guys try to go anywhere, they're gonna set it off. Hey, don't you, don't you, that's the middle of the Shalom back here, Pete, too. You forgot your slides. Rocking your box back here with your old uh, guaranteed damage from the stock. That's a no one for you. Know. It's dead. It has to be dead. Sly picking up another one. Uh, Terry Hulk Hogan. On your order. I don't think you have a stock, but we need literally one damage out of you. So you know what? Here, launch this sting grenade because this, I think, does do one damage. We're never otherwise going to use this. Pete, why would you use a grenade? It didn't even get us. I thought your sting grenades were supposed to do damage, Hogan. Don't you have an ability that's supposed to make support grenades do one damage? Karen Dunn, just get your head down before somebody shoots it off. This guy's definitely dead. He's not going to hit anything. He's disoriented. He's standing on top of a proximity mine. There's an angry Andromedon shell right next to him. Here comes a whole bunch of his muton friends. Oh, you want to go all Hank Williams Jr. on this one? Oh, my mutant friends are here on a Thursday night. Something exploded, but I have no idea what it was. And the serpent did nothing. 
interesting. Well, I think this may be where we wrap this episode up. I, I, I actually like our overall position. Probably our first move out of the box next time. Just going to be have our Andromedon sprint over in this direction. Get some damage on itself and an incidental kill on our little friend, the Serpent Man. This one's running a little bit long, and I am still fighting a bit of a cold. Throat's a little ragged, so I'm going to check out a little earlier than normal. If you enjoyed the episode, feel free to drop a like down in the comment section. Support really does mean a lot. If you'd like to see more XCOM, might consider subscribing as well. Post new episodes every single day. Right now, thanks very much for watching. I'm going to go, you know, have a drink and commiserate about the fact that Joseph really did get fucked on the whole Jesus thing. Not by his wife. I think we understand where I'm coming from. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you again soon.